Hi, greetings again. This is uh, Brian Fields, amateur radio call sign W9CR. And I've been doing a lot of work recently with uh, these uh, AstroTAC uh, P25 comparators. And uh, there's a lot of interesting overlap between them and the Quantars. And one of the things I came up with was um, a firmware upgrade kit. And of course, this is all available uh, on my wiki. Um, you know, the information is free. Uh, the kit is not. Uh, there's some parts that are fairly hard to get. Uh, and, you know, I have a lot of time invested in it. The other thing you get when you buy the kit is uh, I will uh, generally answer phone calls, things like that about it uh, for people on the Internet. I, of course, uh, will best effort try to return email and so forth. But uh, <coughs> I like to think that I, I do a little bit better job when working with uh, the sorts of people that will buy stuff and maybe get caught up with a little particular problem or something like that. So... Uh, this is my kit that I developed here, and I'll show you what's in here. It's very similar to some of the other firmware kits that I sell. The big thing uh, that's hard to get is going to be the, um, uh, the SIM, and that takes a lot of uh, time and effort to be able to convert that over make it useful. Um, which is interesting, the AstroTAC actually checks the ID bits on the SIM, so that's different than it is on the Quantar. It's different than it is on the IR as well. <laughs> so um, it's just another one of those little things, I guess. It's kind of funny. So let me show you what's in the kit here. Here's the kit. Pretty standard. It's going to have little overview, how-to page, and then also the um, electronics parts here, the uh, code plug and the, um, the firmware on this. This is really neat as it allows you to take the AstroTAC 9600, which is the trunking only version, and convert it to an AstroTAC 3000. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they don't want you to do and the reasons for that uh, I can understand from a business perspective, but this is all old equipment that's coming out that's being used by amateurs. It's not uh, in commercial production anymore, or really shouldn't be. And uh, that's not my intended use case for any of this. So if you're using this in life safety applications, anything like that that's commercial, public safety, don't listen to a word I say. Please go to Motorola, ask them to support you. I'm just some guy on the Internet. I may not know what I'm talking about. And most importantly, I don't have any liability for what you're doing. So ham radio, it's for fun. And that's why I do this, because it's something to learn about. Um, so first thing that's in here, I'll show the, uh, the kit. If I open this up, there's only two parts of this kit. And uh, they're pretty easy to see. Let's see. First of all is the uh, SIM. If you can see the SIM, let me zoom in here. Come on, focus. There it is. And the... Come on, focus, focus, focus. Code plug chip. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little PLCC. And uh, this is actually really easy to do. Uh, it's a very, very simple upgrade. The hardest thing is finding a Torx driver to undo it. Um, I'll show how that works here. So that might help see the chip a little bit easier. SIM and the code plug chip. It's just a PLCC. It's the same code plug chip that's used in the regular Quantar. It's just a... Uh, uh, it requires different programming on it. Uh, you can't just reprogram one without an EEPROM programmer, unfortunately. So you can see we have an AstroTAC here. And there I am. <laughs> um, this is a uh, AstroTAC 9600 right now. And I'll show how easy this is. First thing, power it down. Wait for it to die. And then there's two screws on the... Uh, 
line card here. Okay, one at the bottom, and it's going to be this center part right here that comes out. Very, very similar to a Quantar. It's actually back plane almost identical. And take this out, set it aside, along with your screws. Uh, I normally set those, if I have the space, up on top because they don't go anywhere. And then you're going to want to take out the controller. This is real easy to do. It comes out. And the other thing, some of these may have, uh, well, shouldn't have if you're going to be using an AstroTac 3000, shouldn't have anything hooked up to this. If it does, you need to undo that. This is uh, kind of the way they shoehorned Ethernet onto this. And uh, there's your um, board for the um, AstroTac. It's the typical controller. You'll see it has the extra CPU. Uh, this is actually the main CPU. The uh, regular CPU, which is a 360 in the Quantar, is used only for peripheral stuff. It's this CPU that's used to run everything. It's uh, actually the same CPU that was in the original Macintosh and a lot of early routers and things like that. So this is the, um, the firmware card here, or the firmware piece we'll be taking out. And this is the code plug chip. And I'll show you how we do this. Okay. Uh, this is the part where we're going to remove this chip, this SIM, replace it with this SIM, and also remove this chip, replace it with this chip. Pretty simple. Two little tabs, slide this forward, take it out, set it aside. Um, I do buy these back, so uh, if you send it to me, I will credit you uh, PayPal uh, 20 bucks for it because uh, I can uh, reuse them and uh, they're worth about that much. Uh, at least that's uh, right around what I pay for them. Um, I actually find it's easier to use one of these tools. This is a PLCC extractor. You can get in here. Um, if you see with a... Uh, let me zoom in uh, with a screwdriver if you need to as well. But it's uh, it's a lot easier to use a PLCC tool because this will actually go right in there and right in there. And you see how it sits on here. And all you got to do is squeeze and it pops right out. So there's the old chip. Uh, I, of course, don't need the old chip. And I just put a little bit of blue on that to be able to know which is which. And this is actually a fresh virgin AstroTac 9600, so uh, I've never touched this. Just to show how easy this should work. Or I should say does work. Do that. And you'll notice that it's keyed on that side right there. So that's very important to make certain that's aligned. Uh, don't force it in if it doesn't go. Um, and then the next thing you need to do is put in the SIM. And this is really easy. You just align it like this. It'll click here, and then make certain it clicks here too. Sometimes you need to help it. That'll get it in there and get it retained. Uh, now it's just a matter of reassembling it and booting it up. Okay, so once you're ready to go, you have that in there. Take the card. You want to orientate it properly. This guy is going to be on the bottom. Your uh, non, well, non-component side will be facing this way. And then just put it in. Watch this side really, really carefully because there's some stuff here that can get caught as it's going in. So go real nice and slow with it. It might take a little bit of force to get in there. Take your, uh, some people don't want to do this initially. They want to make certain it boots up first and all that. Um, however, I'm confident this is going to work. Because, well, it should. It's how easy it should be.
Take your null modem cable, plug it in, and let it boot up. Okay, so we can see this come on. Now we have a valid code plug chip. It should start up. That's normal. Okay, and that's normal as well. You're going to see them go through a firmware download procedure. These are actually going to pull the firmware off the new firmware chip in there, and they're going to load themselves. Now, the more of these you have, the slower it'll go. There you go. This has upgraded firmware now. And now if we, uh, since we're running here, I'm going to pull the code plug on the computer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the radio. Yeah, that's just complaining that I have another thing open. <laughs> and now we'll go over to the version screen. And you can see here, our version is um, OC, um, which is the comparator version, uh, 3.19.01. Uh, our boot version, our boot 2 version. Uh, that boot 1 version is what you can't change. That's why you can't take a, uh, uh, a SIM from a 9600, make it into a 3000. And um, you can see what we have installed here. This one has... Um, 10 ports, so it has five cards installed. Um, and the last three aren't installed, and all those are now upgraded to the proper uh, wireline uh, firmware version that uh, matches this. And in the comparator, the uh, software version and the main version match, even though what's kind of neat is it gets pushed down from that SIM. That uh, wireline firmware is actually on the SIM gets upgraded. Um, some of the older wireline cards in the Quantar didn't support flash upgrading. Uh, everything that's going to be in a uh, comparator is going to support flash upgrading, uh, as far as I know. So that's how you do your upgrade, and that's how easy it is with the kit. So if you're interested, of course, I have them on eBay. Um, you can also check out my wiki uh, if you want to handle on attempting to do all this yourself. Um, it's out there and, you know, the knowledge is free. Uh, the only thing I wish I had more of was uh, time to do it. So uh, I, I really enjoy doing the documentation on this stuff. It's, uh, it's certainly, uh, certainly fun to learn all this. And uh, that's why I'm into it. So anyways, uh, until next time, uh, this is uh, Brian Fields, Amateur Radio Call Sign, uh, W9CR.